In this video, I'm going to walk you through our three different combined modes available to you on a combiner 3D object. So we're going to start with the first combined mode, which is pack. So I'm going to zoom in on this first one. So what I've done is I've set up a source that creates palettes that are going to come into this first queue and a second source that create boxes that come into this queue here. I've set up my combiner to have a combined mode of pack and so and it's going to pack in this case nine boxes onto that one palette because in this combiner component list I've specified that I want nine boxes for my second port which is this one here. So if I reset and run this, it's going to gather those nine boxes. And let's speed this up here. So it's going to gather nine boxes. And as soon as it gathers nine boxes, it'll start doing its process time, which is this two minutes I have here. So it waits until it gathers all nine boxes, puts them on the palette, and then does the two minute processing time that I've placed on that combiner. So this next one, I've got my boxes, it's done the processing time, now I'm going to run it. Now in this case, when we're packing, what we've actually done is place those boxes inside of the palette. So if I actually move these boxes off here, you'll see there's still individual flow items, but they're inside this palette here. So that's what happens when we pack items, is we actually put the items inside the palette. The next option we have is joining items. And in this case, instead of the items being put into the palette, they basically become the palette when they exit. So you'll actually destroy those other boxes. So to do this, again, I've got my Combined mode is set to join. I'm taking five boxes in this case from my queue and placing them onto my, or come joining them to my palette. So, this, if I reset and run it, we'll see I've got my palette that comes in. And as soon as I get five boxes, it does that processing time and then it comes off and you'll see that the boxes are now gone. So in this case, you could kind of think of this in manufacturing terms that you're kind of assembling an item. So I'm taking a, some parts from here and nine parts from here and putting them into one assembly before I send it on. So that's what it's doing here. The third option we have on our combiner is batching. And in this case, what I've got it set up to do is I have both of my input ports being my queue here, and this queue gets boxes. And I've set it up so that I'm going to batch my items that come in, and I want to get four from my second port. So I'll get one from the first port and four from the second one. So in this case, I've set it up so it'll batch five boxes together process them with one processing time of seven minutes and then as soon as it's done it will release each box individually onto my conveyor. So here I've got my boxes coming in and as soon as it gets all five boxes it does my processing time of seven minutes and then off they go as individual boxes here on my conveyor. So this is something you can do if you have batch processing. You can use this batch object. It can gather as many parts as you need and then process them as a group and then send them out as individuals. But the thing, important thing is to remember that is whatever this target quantity is, it needs to be at least one less than the batch size you want if you've got it set up where you have both ports connected in here. If you don't have both ports connected in, it'll only grab one thing from the first port, and then whatever your second port is, it'll grab this target quantity. Now, in this three cases, I showed you when I only had one connection into my combiner. 
But what I can do is I can have multiple items be batched onto my combiner. So in this case, I've set up my combiner with a pallet being its first port so that I can pack them onto the pallet. And then here I have item type ones will come into this first queue, item type twos into the second queue, item type threes into the third queue. Now what I've done is I've set it up so I'm going to pack four items or four item type ones because they're coming from the second port, three item type twos, and um, two item type threes onto my palette. And then it'll do that processing time and then send it on. So if I reset and run this, you'll see that I'm going to get my boxes coming in and I'm going to stop it while it's on its, the conveyor. So item type ones are red and if we click on this list we're supposed to have four type ones. So if we look you end up having four red boxes. You should have three type twos which are my green ones. So you see I have three green boxes and then I should have two type threes which are my blue boxes. So those get packed onto the palette. So I'm going to keep running this. We'll see that it happens again for the next one. So here I've got four reds, three greens, and two blues on that palette. So in this case, I'm packing the same number of these products onto each palette. So I can have splits like that where I split it up by different types and pull different quantities of different types of objects onto my palette. Another thing I can do with my combiner component list, and I can do this with packing, or I can do it with batching, or I can do it with um, joining if I want, is I can actually update what I'm putting onto a palette using a pick list option we have written for you. So in this example here, what I've done is I created three different mix types. I have a type one, a type two, and a type three. Mix type one has four reds, four greens, and four blues put onto it. Mix type two has eight reds, four greens, and zero bl blues. Mix type three has zero reds, four greens, and eight blues. So depending upon which type I have, come, which type of palette I have come in, I'll get different quantities of the reds, green, and blue boxes put on them. I've done this by creating what I call titled a mix table. And for each row is a different box that I need. Each column is a different mix. So this is my mix one, mix two, mix three. And these numbers match what you actually see on the model. Which I believe, oh no, is this one here. So those numbers match what you see here. So to use that on my combiner, I've set it to pack. And again, you could switch this to batching or you could switch this to joining if you want to do that. But what I've done is down here on my entry trigger, I use the pick list option that we've written for you that says update combiner component list. And in this, li this option, I get to specify what table I want to use. So in this case, I'm using that mix table. You can name that table whatever you want. In this case, I called it mix table. And then what label you want to use on the palette coming in to know which mix to make. So in this case, they're assigned a mix value of one, two, or three when they exit the source. And so if it's a one, again, it'll be orange. Purple is a two. Pink is a three. And so based off of that, it will actually update the values in here based on the palette that's come that comes in. So I'm going to reset this so we can see it from the beginning. And I'm going to run it. In this case, I've got these queues automatically filling with flow items, so I don't have to wait for them to come in.
But if we look closely, I'm going to hit run. It's doing the processing time. If I look closely here, I come and look at my palette. It's an orange palette. So it should have four reds, four greens, and four blues. And if we look around this, we've got four reds, four greens, and four blues. So that was our first one. So we first one was a mix one. Okay, we're going to keep stepping. Next one was also a mix one. So it's also an orange palette. So that's why we don't have any difference. My next, I have three mix ones in a row. I promise I have different mixes. Now, this is a mix type three. So if I run this, and stop it. You can see that it's a mix type 3 because it's got the pink here and the pink has four greens and eight blues. The next one that was a mix 2 and if I stop it, right, I, this one right here is a mix three. If I actually look at my combiner component list, you'll see that it's updated the values also in here for the target quantities to match that of the mix I'm working on. So as it's running and different ones come in, you'll see that those values will update. So I've got my 444, four, four, that was a mix one. I have my 840, that's a mix two. The great thing about using this mix table is if you decide you have another product mix, you can add just in as many columns as you want to have different mixes of these products. You just need to make sure you have a row for each of the input ports past that first. All right, because the way the combiner works is for every additional port past the first input port, they get added it to a row in this table for your um, components to grab for the combiner. So now you can see the different ways that we can use packing, joining, and batching. How we can mix them with multiple different types of objects and how we can actually update them based on table values.